All right, so let's, let's solve this problem. And here's where we need to... Go get them. All right, now, let's solve this problem, okay? To solve the problem, I'm gonna draw a picture. I always draw pictures for projectile motion problems. So here is this yard. Here's the you know, Arbor Vita hedge is right there. Here is, here's giant running man behind me, right? Here's fifth grade me, right? He's like, grr. Here's like, Yeah, it was really you would you would not jump off it on purpose. I think to avoid like death, you would, you know, as we thought we were, right? But we would we may you know I don't know one of those things, right? Let's assume that this let's make this six point two meters tall. No, no, just face plant right into you know nice packable deep drift. Just would I think it would have ended badly? Yeah, if this had been concrete, would have been bad, right? Yeah. I don't know. It was crazy. It was like this thing here. There was a, a house here, and then this was actually an apartment complex right there. There was an apartment complex, and I think there was a house here that owned this yard. I don't know. Go figure. They just put it in when they build it. Okay, so let's make this 5.0 meters per second. 5.0 meters per second. Let's make that 6.2 meters. And now let's solve... Um, this thing. When you do these problems, what you do, this is the general procedure, is you set up a suvat, and there's one horizontally and there's one vertically, and they don't affect each other. Right? So you just set up S U V A T S U V A T, right? And and then you just look through the problem and you figure out what it is you know for each one and then you solve them. Now here is here's the one trick, okay? The only thing that they're going to share is time. That is, I stopped moving sideways when I stopped moving down. They were the same time. Yes? Okay. So time is on, time is on both sides, right? So this guy will be the same time. Once I know this time, I can bring it over or vice versa, right? Okay. So the first thing is to fill this in. So what do we know? Matthias knows something. Yeah, you bet. The vertical acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. He's like, ooh, ooh. So, I'm sorry, you only get one. I know, well. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, initial velocity horizontally is 5.0. I don't think anyone would argue with that. Trump. Negative, right? So negative 6.2 meters. And basically, oh, oh what do we want to know? I want to know where I landed. And then I want to know when I hit the ground, not only how far out was I, right? I mean, I know I was far out, right? But, but um, I want to know the, s the velocity of impact and I want to know it as a vector component m vector, and then I want to know it angle magnitude. I also want to know the speed of impact, because it felt like it hurt. I want the speed of impact, and I want the velocity of impact, since it's a vector, as components. And then I also want an angle magnitude vector, since we now can speak that language that we speak with, like, vectors, right? Yeah? Who else knows something that we know? Okay, it was a level yard, so I think I wasn't moving up or down when I left the edge, right? So this is zero, okay? And I call this a cliff problem when that's the case. That's just what I call them, okay? Now, had I been moving 
at a, on a ramp and I was moving up at some angle, I would have to break that velocity into x and y components and I'd throw it in there and then we'd go. So if you look at the flow chart, if there's an angle magnitude vector, break it into x and y, then do your SUVOT. We'll do that next time, but not this time, okay? So these are easy. We can just start right here. And then once we go to answer the questions, we might have to do some vector stuff, okay? Now, um, I'm going to propose this. Assuming, let's assume that I hadn't recently eaten a Taco Bell, okay? So therefore, I had no form of propulsion <laughs> while I was in midair, right? I didn't have like a propeller on me or a little rocket engine. Air friction was negligible, okay? So I'm going to propose that my acceleration horizontally was zero. Now, once that becomes zero, this side becomes easy. This side's always easy. This is always true. This is always true that this will be 9.81 unless we go to a different planet. This will always be zero. These guys will always be equal. When you know the final, you'll know the initial. When you know the initial, you'll know the final. The velocity horizontally is constant. These guys are aliases of each other. If you type it in here, it appears right here instantaneously. Whew. It's crazy, huh? All right. Now, and then the other thing that we all, all the, the only thing we do horizontally is we use S equals UT. Why isn't there a one-half AT squared on that side? Is it because A is zero? Yeah, so all we're going to do is just S is UT on this side, right? Over here, though, we do have an acceleration, so it's a full-fledged SUVOT type of thing, right? Okay, and that's why we're, we studied how to do those, right? Okay, now... Now what we do, now we've got three things here. The way this is going to play out is we can solve this side. We'll castle time across. It's like in chess where we castle. You can only do it once though. Okay. We'll castle it across and then we can solve for this, right? My favorite thing is to find time. I use um, S equals UT plus 1 FAT squared. Right, for this guy. This is easy to use for, to solve for time because there is no initial velocity, right? And so I go minus 6.2 is 1 half negative 9.81 t squared. So take your calculator now, and because there's nothing else to do and you're bored, right? Okay, take your calculator right now and solve that for the t. Notice I didn't use the 5 as the initial velocity because that's on the other, the other side, right? I can't use that with 9.8. I have to keep, I have to use this side or this side. They're independent. They do not affect each other. There is no effect. Do you guys get like 1.124? Using this? It's like the square root of... Uh, then square root it. <laughs> Multiply by 2 divided by 9.81. Do you get rid of the half? Yeah, that works. Yeah. It's commutative, so it doesn't matter which way. Okay, now, what I do when I'm solving these, I either use a spreadsheet, okay? Um, Moira Todd, I think, uh, a couple of years ago, she had a spreadsheet on her calculator. She just set these things always up with spreadsheets, okay? I don't have a spreadsheet on mine, but I'm just storing that in the variable T, so I just said storage, and then you have to go alpha T, mine, I can just go storage T, right? And then I just notate, notate that this way, right? Now, you don't have to do that, though, to solve these problems. And then we can, we can slide this guy across. This becomes 1.124 as well, because I stop moving sideways when I stop moving down. And then let's find the final vertical velocity. If you're morally pure, you'll use v squared as u squared plus 2as. I'm lazy, so I'm going to use the time that I've got. I'm going to use v equals u plus at, right? So 0 plus negative 9.81 times... 1.124. So 
So I'm just going to multiply what's on my calculator by negative 9.81. 